Welcome back to our course on Visio 2016. In this section we're going to look at creating an organization chart using external data. First of all I'll just discuss some of the options for external data. Then we'll look at the org chart data we're going to use in the example in this section. And this data is stored in an Excel workbook. We'll then look at using the org chart wizard using data from the workbook. And finally, we'll look at an example of correcting an error. So the first thing to point out is that Visio can get data for org charts, and in fact, for many other types of chart, from many different external sources. And I'm going to talk more about data, external data, and what we generally call shape data in a few sections from now. Many of the sources that it can get data from are really quite specialized. So you can get data from Microsoft Access databases, external ERP systems, enterprise resource planning systems, and so on. So when I was looking at what to demonstrate here, I tried to choose something which was as little specialized as possible. So I chose Microsoft Excel. Quite a lot of people use Microsoft Excel and it's a relatively straightforward data source but it's also sophisticated enough to support the kind of data structures that you're going to see in org charts. So here we have the content of the Visio 2016 org chart 02 data workbook. The name of the member of staff is in the first column Diane Dixon, Peter Bogdanovich and so on the role they have is in the second column and their manager is in the third column. I want you to ignore columns D and E. If you're not familiar with Microsoft Excel, if you don't use it and you're starting to feel a bit baffled already, don't worry. You only need those first three columns, the ones with the heading A, B and C, and they contain the information that you saw in the preceding section, but in a structured form. In order to make things relatively straightforward, Bryony has only two people reporting to her, Andy Clenham, who's the network manager, and Cecile Lombardo, who's the maintenance manager. Other than that, and they were not named in the previous section, the people in the org chart are the same people that were in the previous section. They have the same roles and should be reporting to the same managers. For one of those people, Peter Bogdanovich, we're going to see a little bit of a problem when we've made the org chart, but I'll also show you how to correct that problem as well. So that's the Excel workbook. It's in the Course Files folder if you aim to try this out yourself. Let's try that wizard now. So here's the organization chart wizard. I want to create my organization chart from information that's already stored in a file or database. That's the option I'm going to choose. Information that I enter using the wizard. One option that's available to me is to enter the information or the equivalent of the information you've just seen as I use the wizard. I suggest that when you've finished working through this section, you try that option out yourself. Now notice the options I have. A Microsoft Exchange Server directory. If you have access to a Microsoft Exchange Server, which is normally used to hold employee information, including email addresses and so on, you can use that option here. The third option, an ODBC compliant data source. So if you have information in something like an Access database or some other type of database, Microsoft SQL Server Database, Oracle Database, etc. Anything that's ODBC compliant, you can use that here. The middle option, a text file, an orgplus.txt file or an Excel file is the one we're going to use. So that's the second option. Next again. Now I need to locate the file. So what I'm going to do is to browse to my course files folder. And there's the file you're going to be using if you're working along with me. 
Visio 2016 Org Chart 02 data. Click on Open. The language is English United States. Click on Next. And what Visio does is to take a look at that workbook and the first sheet in that workbook, in the Excel workbook, and just try to figure out what those columns mean. So it looks at the data and tries to work out what the various columns mean. Choose the columns fields in your data file that contain the information that defines the organization. So it thinks that the name is in the name column, which is correct. And in fact, if you take a look at the workbook separately, you'll see that's correct. They report to a manager and the S, that's the correct column. The column was called manager. And if there's a first name column as well, which there isn't in this case, so note that's optional, you can check that it's picked up the correct first name option here as well. Now there was no first name column so that optional field won't be included. Click on next. Now choose the columns, the fields that you want to display. Now the name field we know is already the name of the person and Excel has correctly identified that and that's going to be name there. Now the role field is the one that actually gives the job title so we want to show that as well. But we don't want to show the manager because the manager's name will appear as their name in their own shape. And as I said earlier on, I want to ignore employee number and start date. So they're the only two that I want to show name and role. Click on next. Choose the columns fields from your data file that you want to add to organization chart shapes as shape data fields. Now I only want name and role, I don't want an employee number, so I'm going to remove that one. I could have it if I wanted it, but I'm going to remove it. Click on Next. Now I have an option to import pictures. Now at this stage I can specify a folder that contains the pictures to include in the org chart. We're actually going to add pictures in the next section, so at the moment I'm going to say don't include pictures. If I did want to include them I'd need to specify the folder and I'd also need to specify which of the fields that's available is used to match the picture to the person. So for instance I might need to put their employee number as the name of the picture and then include employee number in the org chart. Or I could perhaps just use their name and their picture would then need to include their name. But at this stage, as I say, I'm not going to include pictures, so I'm going to click on Next. Your organization data may contain too many employees to fit on one page of your drawing. You can specify how much of your organization to display on each page, or you can let the wizard define each page automatically. Now, it may be that if you have a very large number of shapes, it's definitely not going to fit on one page and you can give the wizard rules about how to decide how much to put on each page. Now the default option here is the second option. The first option says I want to specify how much of my organization to display on each page. Particularly if this is going to be quite a complex chart to draw and you really want it to appear as a multi-page chart but with you being very specific about what goes on each page you might want to use the first option and in fact again you might want to try that yourself when you've worked through the example as I'm working through it here. We're going to go for the second option which basically leaves it to Visio, and we'll see what Visio comes up with. Bear in mind that when you're using this wizard because apart from checking boxes and making selections here it's normally a pretty quick thing to do. If it all goes horribly wrong and it doesn't work, it's relatively straightforward to just go back to the start and try different options. So let's go for the automatically option. And the name at the top of the first page, top executive, that's going to be the person who's highest in the hierarchy. If I click on the drop down here, I could actually choose here, in our case, that Diane's going to go at the top. But I'm pretty sure that Visio is going to work that out for itself anyway 
based on the management reporting hierarchy. Now the two other things here hyperlink employee shapes across pages and synchronize employee shapes across pages we're going to look more at these later on particularly when we're looking at multi-page drawings but at the moment we'll stick with the defaults of having both of those checked and click on finish. Away it goes and that's what it's come up with which is pretty good actually. I think that very much reflects our hierarchy but for the error of Peter Bogdanovich which we're going to look at next. Now this particular error in this org chart was caused whilst using the wizard but an org chart produced by the wizard is just the same as any other org chart and you might need to correct errors you may need to make changes somebody in the org chart may get a promotion or start reporting to a different boss so rather than have to continually redraw charts it's useful to be able to make changes to them and in this particular case Peter who's actually Diane's PA if I select the shape for Peter and right click on the contextual menu one of the options is change position type and if I change that to assistant it appears that nothing has happened but if I go up and click on relayout in the layout group on the org chart tab Visio corrects the chart accordingly so all I now need to do is to save this chart with an appropriate name in the course files folder. That's the end of this section. I'll see you in the next one. Hey everyone, Nigel here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a Simon Says It subscriber, go ahead and click right down here so you don't miss any videos. Click over here to check out our complete training course at simonsaysit.com and click down right there to see the complete list of videos in this playlist. We'll see you next week with additional videos.